Yep, I'm really giving away a massive painting in this video. So if you want to find out what the whole deal is, just keep watching. I promise you, it'll all make sense. I've been really looking forward to making this video. Ever since I got this box here, it's been sitting in the back of my studio, just waiting for me to get to it. And now that the day has finally come, I'm kind of excited. So let's open it up together and take a look inside, shall we? Oh, okay. It's one, two boxes. So, the model for our painting today will be none other than the Dark Knight himself. Still needs to be assembled, of course, but once we do that, we should have a reference and a model to make a pretty damn cool painting. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet, so let's put them together, see what we're working with, and then we'll figure things out as we go. I don't think this is, oops, okay. I'm probably gonna break it. I'm, I didn't really expect it, but I, it seems like I'm too dumb to assemble this. Um, now, oops, it's probably just a matter of time before I break something. What should I do? Initially I thought I would just paint a regular still life. More or less around this size, maybe a bit smaller, maybe a bit bigger. But now I'm thinking maybe I should paint a giant ass Dark Knight painting. I mean, when's the next time I'm gonna get a chance to paint something like this? But I'm not sure. Both would certainly look cool. The still life would have to be around this size, otherwise it wouldn't make sense, it would look completely off. But if I want to make a large painting, I would probably have to go the realistic or semi-realistic direction. I'm hoping that uh, I will get inspired to go one way or the other after taking the reference photos. Yeah, but a giant painting... Yeah, it would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? So I decided to go with a 120 by 170 centimeter canvas. And while it's not crazy big, you know, I would say it's big enough for what I have in mind and for a giant Dark Knight painting. The only issue I have now is, or the only question left is, how am I going to translate the three-dimensional reference into two dimensions. Here's the thing. A sculpture is always optimized and supposed to be looked at in three dimensions, from different angles, walking past it, etc. And while it works perfectly in that way, if you take it and translate it into two dimensions, and then you frame it in a rectangle or a square, you suddenly realize that it, it just doesn't work quite the same way. You know, it's just not made to be viewed in this limited space. You end up with, in this case in particular, weird empty space and then weird compositional lines that don't really work uh, from a design perspective. So what I have to do is, I guess, uh, I will have to put in some extra efforts to make this thing work as an illustration. Believe me, there's nothing I would like more than just to take a photo and then paint the reference photo and that's it. Believe me, that would make my life a lot easier. But in this case, you know, I don't think it's gonna work out. And my motivation is always pretty much to make the best painting I can. Yeah, with this, it does need some extra work. 
which is also a good thing if you think about it because then I still have the option to make it my own and kind of go above and beyond the reference that I have. I gotta mention a few things. First of all, I won't be going into the painting process here too much, or actually at all. I'm gonna make a whole separate video for this over on my Patreon, and I'm gonna talk about some of the design choices, why I chose this specific dynamic composition and none other. I'm gonna talk about some of the materials that I used, and also some of the techniques that I used to bring this painting to life. But I won't be going into that here. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that doing something crazy like this, and believe me, for me, this is pretty crazy. It wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. Without the support and the backing of so many fans and friends and followers, I wouldn't be able to make a painting like this and then to quite literally just give it away, which I'm gonna get into, trust me. Just bear with me for a second here. But I do believe it's very important to mention that. I don't know if you've noticed, but as of recent, so many creators and original creators on YouTube are just stopping and retiring. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that YouTube is going into a direction that makes it harder and harder for original creators yeah, to exist on this platform. It's so much easier to just react to something that already exists than to create something from scratch that is original and then put all your heart and soul and hours and days of work into something just to have it be outperformed by a 10 second version of this very same exact video. Now I know it's a whole different discussion and a can of worms that we can get into in a whole separate video, but I do want to stress the fact that original creators here on YouTube, people who make, who actually make something, please do support them, if you can, if you enjoy what they're doing, and if you're in a position to. And the same goes for me. So. If you like what I do, if you like seeing me create cool stuff here on YouTube, make paintings, live and breathe art, talk about art related things, head over to Patreon, join our little community. It keeps the cameras rolling, it keeps the brushes wet and the palette fresh. So a big thank you to my patrons. I also really quickly need to give a huge shout out to, first of all, the artist that created this awesome reference that I used to make this painting, Daniel Bell. Fantastic sculptor and artist. And obviously his design is based off of uh, Frank Miller's Dark Knight design, which is another artist that I gotta shout out in this video. You know how the saying goes in science that we only stand on the shoulders of giants and it's pretty much the same in the art world as well. So this painting here that you see me creating here wouldn't be possible without those artists, so credit where credit is due. And with that, we're finally at the part you've been waiting for. What is the whole deal with this video? Why do I create a painting, a massive painting like this, that I could sell for a significant amount of money and why am I giving it away? Well, in all honesty, I just wanted to make this painting. I got the statue, I thought it would be a fantastic challenge, it would be a great exercise and it would make a cool painting. And I knew, the fanboy that I am, that creating something like this brings me immense amounts of joy. You could say that I just wanted to create something for the sake of creating it. Now that still doesn't explain why I'm giving it away, but here's the deal. Sure, I can try selling the painting. It might take a while, it may or may not sell at all, I have absolutely no idea. But then I thought to myself, what would happen if you took money completely out of the equation? What would happen if the final destination of the painting wasn't determined by the size of someone's wallet? What if I just created for the sake of creating and the painting found a place, well, found its place? Not because of money, connections or status, but because it's the best possible place it could end up in. So where is the catch? Well, the catch is that I'm not just gonna raffle it away or something. The idea is that the painting ends up in a place where a wide audience can appreciate it. That is the bare minimum requirement. You can apply for it, you can reach out via email projectbatman at alpaefe.com and this painting can be yours. You will have time until the end of next month, February, and then I'm gonna make a final decision. But before you head over there and flood us with mails, let me further explain. I basically want this painting to end up in the coolest possible place it could end up in. Now this could be something that is publicly accessible. It could be something like a museum, it could be something like a mall, a theater, a store, movie theater. It could be anything along those lines. 
a place where people can come and see it for an extended period of time. So if you have a place like that, or if you know a place like that, or if you want to have the painting in a place like that, you can apply via mail, send us photos, send us the place where you want to put the painting or the idea that you have. And I will personally go through every application and I will pick the one where I feel like, okay, now this is the coolest place this painting could have ever ended up in. But don't just send us a line where you say, I have this store and I want the painting or anything like that. In order to be eligible, I need to have an idea where this painting will specifically end up and where it will be for the next 18 to 24 months. So very important, send photos, a concrete idea. In order to be eligible, that's what you gotta do. Now that is that. But I also want to leave room for some creative ideas. Now, of course, if uh, maybe Warner Brothers wants to have the painting for their lobby, I would certainly be open to that. Or maybe if the painting could find a place at Universal Studios, that'd also be very nice and fitting place for such a painting. But I also don't want to rule out some more creative ideas for this painting's final destination or purpose. I invite you all to think outside the box and I encourage you to come up with creative ideas as to where this painting could be on display and where its coolest possible final destination could be. But that being said, the primary condition is non-negotiable. I'm very open to enthusiastic ideas, but it has to be seen by a wide audience. At the end of the day, in my humble opinion, that's the purpose of art, to be seen. So if you have a place like that, if you know a place, if you got an idea for creative display outside the box, if you got an opportunity, send us a mail, apply, I will go through all mails personally. I will cover shipping. The painting will be yours. You have to sign an agreement, obviously, because we got to make sure that the painting doesn't find another final destination a couple of weeks after it arrives. But apart from that, it's really as simple as I am giving this five figure painting away. Call me crazy, call me stupid. You're probably right, but that's what we're going to do. If you're a bit confused now, don't worry. I'm very confused myself. But you can head over to my website where you can read up on all the requirements and the whole idea and everything that I just talked about. I have to say, it's kind of liberating to do something like this. Just taking money out of the equation and just creating for the sake of creating. And I'm also just curious to see what can happen. I will be 100% transparent about this. I'm gonna post about it, where I'm at, where this painting is, where it's going. I wanna document the whole process and also uh, ideally the final display of the painting. Maybe even deliver it myself if it's within my possibilities. But if not, I'm gonna definitely make a video where you can see where this painting is and where you can maybe even go to see this painting. And now I gotta ask you all for a favor. Because if this weird, almost social experiment is going to work, we need to get this out to as many people as possible. So leave a comment down below, leave a like, share this video on your social media with your friends, tag people, post about it on Reddit, talk about it, help me get this out to as many people as possible so this painting can find a fitting forever home. So to sum it up, you can apply via mail I'll be giving this painting away. It will be yours. It's got to be on display. You got to send us photos, a text, an application, your ideas, etc., etc. And then I will make a final decision at the end of February. And with that, I'm finally at my absolute favorite part of this video, where I finally get to show you how freaking badass the painting turned out. <laughs>